Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. Today, uh, well, just doing what I always do, is just sat here trying to buy cars. Every now and then we get something interesting to go through and I'll try and show you the whole kind of buying process to collecting it, to getting it back and what we think about it. And a lot of you really enjoyed the Range Rover Sport one that we did before. I'm quite liking the Range Rover cars at the moment. They, they are problematic. We've got one that's been in the workshop for about three days, having its timing belt done. Um, but there's good margins in them. That's the sort of thing I'm I'm liking at the moment. Probably all the warranty stuff will pile up and then I'll start hating them again. But in the meantime, I'm looking at buying a nice white Range Rover Sport 2016. Tobin, come around and I'll show you what we're looking at. We're talking about Aston Barkley today. This is at Westbury, so only about an hour or so away from us. Doesn't she look nice and white with the black wheels? I mean, it, I'd, I'd have a red one, personally, and I'm not so sure on the red wheels, but that is definitely going to appeal to a lot of people. Um, it's in pretty nice condition. It's a grade two, so it's you know second to the very best, really. It's got the whole nice LCD display. I think probably the other one we had, what, was, what age was the other one? About that sort of age. Yeah, they're just nice things. It looks quite nicely specced. It's got the pan roof. It's got you know heated leather and all that sort of stuff. It's a bit grubby in the back, but we can get all that balloted up. You've got to see through the dirt. Um, show us the panoramic roof, I guess, to show us that it's not damaged. So two former keepers, um, it's got a service print being serviced at 9,000 miles, 21,000 miles, and 37,000 miles. And it is now on a grand total of just under 49,000 miles. So quite nice mileage. It's got a cat clean price of 16,650. But if we look at Auto Trader, I've bung that information in there. All right, it's only got an 18 out of 100 Auto Trader retail rating. That's as we discussed before, that kind of tells us how popular and in demand it is in our area within 50 miles of me, not everyone. In, you know, just me specifically. So that might be a bit higher for me than it would be in London because it'd probably be like zero in London because you can't really insure them. That said, I'm sure someone's going to jump in the comments now and tell me that Land Rover are now offering to make contributions to your insurance to ensure that you can get insured and they've come out of their own insurance product. Yes, I'm just generalizing. It's quite expensive at the moment. The retail valuation for this is about 24 grand just over without taking the specification into consideration. Um, so I think you'd aim it just under a little bit, maybe. It's telling me that the part exchange valuation is 15,360. So I thought if you got it for, let's say 17,500 pounds, all in, including your fees, that's probably a bit of about 17,000 pounds, you would have about six and a half grand margin to work with, which would be very nice, wouldn't it? It sounds like an awful lot of money, but I wouldn't want to work with less. Do you imagine if it turns up and the engine's a bit knackered and there's no real comeback on it? I can't remember. Does it have an assured report on it? Is it assured? Um, I'm not very good at Aston Barkley. Oh, it is assured. So you'd have a small amount of time. But yeah, I mean, it could have any number of things that aren't covered by that. But it's been interesting to see. I, I tried to bid on a couple other things today. I tried to bid on a Disco Sport. That went over what I want to pay for it, but it was about 118,000 miles, 118. And I don't mind that mileage, that was fine, but it just, I didn't want to pay strong money for something on that sort of mileage. This has got nice mileage, so I'm willing to, you know, I think it will draw people in so it's worth buying. And I tried to buy a little Audi A1. Again, it went well over my proxy bid. It looks quite busy in the hall here. So, don't know, we'll see. Are people still wary of them or being in the Southwest, are people going to be all over it? I don't know but we're about to find out. You'll join me when we're bidding on it. Right, so before we bid on this, we ought to do a vehicle score check, really. So we're gonna enter our registration, which is Oscar Echo 16 X-Ray Delta Lima. It's gonna give us a score from one to 999 based on its MOT, history, age, mileage, and many other factors. And look at that, 924 out of 999. Top marks, much better than the average, which is 757. Of course, we've got loads of information here on the vehicle score website, we can check to see whether it's ULES compliant. I'd be surprised, but you never know. It is ULES compliant, can you believe it? Um, we can scroll down to your engine size, the last recorded mileage. Uh, this would be part of your paid history reports, which we'll get to in a minute, that you could do, which would give you this information here. Other than that, we've got our mileage tracker, which shows that the mileage is always going up, hasn't dipped down. Anything dodgy like that that would make you think that perhaps it had been clocked. You can see your estimates here. And you can get a cash offer from Auto Trader as well. And then we can look at our performance. So tap to reveal that. 
it's 302 brake horsepower, not 60, 7.2 seconds, which is absolutely obscene for a car that size. What's really good as well, the uh, tax is only 335 pounds, which is an awful lot better than some of the older ones, which are about 700 quid. Here's our MT history, which shows it's actually really good. Just one advisory for a worn tire. So really, really good history. If I was selling my car, I can add an image onto here and you have a little banner that will show my score. That would be perfect for this car because it's got such a good score. You've got the AI mechanic, the future value estimator, and loads of things here as well for car insurance tips. So if you're gonna be buying this car yourself, then I highly recommend doing one of their vehicle history checks to these paid reports here. For £2.97, you get the salvage report. Uh, for £8.97, you get the ultimate report. And for 11 97 you get the Ultimate Report Plus, which gives you all the information you could possibly want, whether it was import, export, salvage check, gets a full breakdown of your score, checks whether it's got any finance outstanding on it, whether the car's a category vehicle, it's got a category against it, whether it's been an insurance write-off, whether it's been scrapped, whether it's been an ex-taxi, and loads and loads of other things. Plus you get £10,000 of data guarantee, and you also get three entries into the £600 monthly draws, which is well worth having. Don't forget, use my code SHIFTINGMETAL20. You will get 20% off making that ultimate report under £10. Here we go. Starting cheap enough. I say it's starting off very cheap with very little interest, but now it's picking up. That would be very cheap if we get it for that, but I imagine it will pick up again in a minute. Well, did we win it or was it provisional? Provisional. So, 15.8, we were the highest bid, but it's a provisional bid, it tells me on here. So let's have a look. So it's telling us. Well, the other thing I didn't mention before when we were looking at this as well, it's come from Mercedes-Benz Southwest. So, you know, it's a good dealership. Someone's come in and obviously bought some nice BMW. Not BMW. That'd be weird if they bought BMW from Mercedes. You know what I mean. My brain, no good. I meant they've obviously been in and bought a nice Mercedes. So we will have to wait and hear if we get a phone call on that. But let's do the math. 15.8. I think it'll probably be on something that... It's going to be about 450 in fees, I think. And let's say some fuel for collecting. It's, let's say, another 500 quid on top. So we're looking at 16... How much did I pay for it? 16.3? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it'd be about 16.3, which would mean... Let's take out the pricing for any costs incurred. Let's round down the price to a more realistic 23.995. We'd be looking at a measly £7,778 potential margin. And I would retire and go away for the rest of the year. We'll see. I imagine they will phone me and say they want more money. But let's just remind ourselves the cap clean was 16650 and what do we bid? 15.8. We're not that far off. I mean, I was willing to go more, so I might round up to 16 if they say. But. I do know of Aston Barkley, they are not the quickest at getting back to you on your provisional bids. So, in fact, I'll probably have to chase them. I don't think they've ever phoned me. BCA will be straight on the phone pretty much like, yeah, they want more money or no, they don't. I'm going to have to wait to hear on that one. So, um, yeah, Toby's not going to be hanging around with his camera when the phone call goes, sadly. So I'll catch up when I know more and give you an update. Bye bye. Down at Westbury Auctions, here to pick up a Range Rover. Looks like I got a Bible with it. The maze of cars. Ah, found it. There we go. Look at that thing. Very, very nice. What lights have we got? Look at that. These are exhaust fluid low. High pressure ones. Service required. Don't call people names very often. But why? Why part there? 
I mean, it looks like a lot of room, but it's not. YouTube video then, is it? You can do all the way through, isn't it? Yeah, I've watched your, um, your weekly updates. Yeah? Yeah, really good. All right, ready to set off. Right, so our Range Rover has arrived now. It's actually been validated as well. It's been here for probably only a day, but I haven't even sat in it myself, but it's been validated and they've taken pictures of it. We've got our paperwork, so let's pull it out and we'll have a look at it. the windows open because it's absolutely scorching in there but it does look good doesn't it it's another one where it like lowers itself down which makes it look like you know some kind of lowered car anyway uh it will pump back up again but it does look nice in white i don't think it's quite as specky as the black one that we've got around the other side or maybe even the one that we had from a dad but Still a very nice thing. Has it got a power boot? Of course it does. Look at that. I don't think this, no, sports, they're not seven seat, are they? But it all oh, looks pretty nice. Like, what is it, 49,000 miles? That's, oh, I think it's got one of those. There's a button here as if to show a tow bar coming out. But. Maybe it's not fitted. Yeah, there is, there is a tow bar there. Sort of, oh, power. Hey! That's pretty cool, actually. I like that a lot better than a swan neck because you have a swan neck because you can take it off and then it won't look like that. ML's got over there. You kind of put the key in and unlock it and twist it out and whatever. I bet Jason didn't even know it had this. Should we go and find out? Because he's taking pictures and listed it. This is the sort of stuff he needs to know. Did you know that white Range Rover's got a power fold out tow bar? No, I didn't think you would have done. There we are, see? This is why, this is why I've still got a valuable position here at Barrow Motors. So find things on cars. You've got to press the power button and then you can press it. I guess it's like a two-stage thing because you don't want something to roll around in your boot, do you, and hit the, the fold button while you've got a caravan on the back or something. That would be disastrous. There we are. So much, so many electronic motors in this thing. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, bodywork looks good. So there definitely was a few scuffs on the wheels that we had to sort out. But we might end up, let see here, Jason's touched a few in. We might end up doing a wheel refurb on those, but on the whole, she's bloody lovely. So that said, how it looks is one thing, but how it drives is another. So I'm gonna hop in it, take it for a spin. I gotta say, the more I drive these Range Rover Sports, the more I like them. This was the car that I've been thinking about for the last five years, probably. I thought, oh, that's the next sort of car. If I was to buy one for myself, which, I very rarely do because I end up selling it because that's just the kind of mindset I've got. This would have been it because I just think they look an awful lot of car for the money and they still look nice and modern and imposing, just smart. They've got all the technology you could possibly want and they're just really nice and comfortable as well. It would suit me perfectly. You still put the dogs in the back, it's comfortable, it's certainly not slow. So yeah, there could be one on the cars in the future but who knows? I can never seem to keep hold of any cars. How snappy that command shift gearbox is. And the fact that this thing will do 0 to 60 in 7.2 seconds, I think Jason was telling me. It's just 
obscene. I know the SVRs are an awful lot quicker, but this is just the kind of like entry level three litre V6 diesel. I've probably got that wrong as well because they do a petrol, a two litre petrol hybrid and that sort of thing. It's gonna be very interesting to see how this performs now that it's listed because maybe buying these things, you know, under the 50,000 mile mark is, you know, the knack to dealing with them. Hopefully you get less problems. The last one we had was snapped up within a week at most. Will this one be the same or will it just be that it was just a coincidence? It was just pure luck with the last one. I honestly don't know. Time will tell. This one also seems to do the auto access level thing, which I don't particularly like. I'm sure I can figure out how to turn it off, but it's not going to be much point because the person who buys it may like it. So we'll leave it on until I have to figure it out. But otherwise, I have no complaints whatsoever. I'm going to put this into sport mode. Ridiculous. This one doesn't seem to have quite as a uh, dramatic. Oh, it has changed now to uh Ah, now that we're going into manual mode, we've got the gear switches. I am a big fan of these so far until they bite me, which they haven't yet. There's a reason there are big margins to be made in this, which I think if this owes us, I think from memory, it was 15,800 pounds plus fees, plus collecting it, plus whatever we're gonna have to spend on prepping it. So let's say it's 17 grand all in. We've got it up for 23,995, so 24 grand there's potential seven grand gross profit in this, which sounds ridiculous, but we are gonna have to warrant it and there will be an awful lot of VAT to pay on that as well. So while they do sound very tempting, there could be some risk involved, but so far I am, I would say enjoying buying Land Rover products and selling them, but I haven't been burnt yet but only time will tell. So there we have it so far. I am very, very pleased with my purchase and hopefully you enjoyed watching the video. If you have, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do because as soon as I reach 75,000 subscribers, I'm giving away a 2,000 pound Tag Heuer Formula One watch completely free to one of those 75,000 subscribers. So, all right, I'll be honest, the odds are one in 75,000. They're not probably the best odds, but it's free, so why not? Just trying to give something back here for joining the shifting metal community. And talking of giving back, make sure you check out my website, feelgoodcompetitions.com, where I'm always running competitions, which are in aid of charity. Currently, we're trying to raise money for Jack Guide, who's a young lad, five years old, who's got neuroblastoma, a rare form of cancer. And as soon as he's done with his NHS treatment, he needs a vaccine that is available in America only costs about £250,000. So get involved with the competitions. You might win a car, watch or some cash and you'll be helping out a really great cause. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.